Hi there. In today's video, we're going to learn how to create a sliced text effect using clipping masks in Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started. I'm going to start by creating an 850 by 600 pixels document. I'm going to change the color mode to RGB and raster effects to 72 and hit create. First of all, I need to go to Preferences and on a Mac, you'll find Preferences under Illustrator and on a PC, it should sit under Edit Menu. In Preferences, go to Guides and Grid tab and change the grid line every option to 5 pixels and subdivisions to 1 and hit OK. So now my grid lines will have increments of 5 pixels. Let's go to View and then Show Grid. Go to view once again and ensure that you check the snap to grid option because it's going to make life easier for you. Another thing that will make life easier for you is the info option. So go to window and show the info panel. You'll know soon enough how info panel helps us. Pick the rectangle tool and create an 870 by 620 pixel shape. And this is where info panel comes into the picture. It will help you keep a track of the measurement while you're drawing your shape. Make sure that this rectangle covers your entire artboard so you can place it right on top of the artboard and to be accurate with the shape selected, click the horizontal align center and the vertical align center buttons from the alignment panel on top or on the right. Now we need to fill it with the linear gradient, so just click on this gradient bar and it shall become active. Click the color stop on the left and from the burger menu switch to RGB color mode and enter 79 for red, 0 for green and 116 for blue and hit return. Now click the color stop on the right and switch the color mode to RGB from the burger menu and then enter 209 for red, 115 for green and 248 for blue and hit return. Now using the gradient tool, apply the gradient diagonally as illustrated. Now grab the text tool and click once on the artboard to have some text. Select the text and change the text size to 270 pixels. With the text still selected, change the font to Obrezek or any other similar font. Now I'm going to change the text to the word severed, which means having been cut or sliced off. And that's the effect we are aiming for in this tutorial anyway. Now place the text in the center and to be accurate, hit the horizontal align center and vertical align center buttons from the alignment options on top. Also change the font color to white. Pick the rectangle tool and create a 320 pixel square. You'll have to hold shift so that the rectangle stretches uniformly from both sides making it a square. And keep your eyes on the info panel for a perfect 320 by 320 pixels measurement. Change the fill color of the square to black and lower its opacity to 30%. Now place it covering the left side of the word as illustrated. At this point, go to view and then rulers and show rulers. And click, hold and drag a guide from the ruler on top and place it touching the square on top. Similarly, place another guide touching the bottom of the square as illustrated. Next, pick the direct selection tool and click the top right anchor point of the square to select it and then hit the delete key or the backspace key to turn the square into a triangle. With the triangle selected, hit command C on a Mac or control C on a PC to copy it and then command F on a Mac or control F on a PC to paste it on front and then click the flip horizontally button on the right to have the new triangle flipped and placed on the right. And then with this new triangle selected, hit flip vertically button to have it flipped once again. Now place this triangle to cover the right side of the text. Ensure that both the triangles align properly. So to do that, have them both selected and then click the left triangle once again to base the alignment on 
and then click Vertical Align top button from the Alignment panel. At this point, both the triangles should be mirroring each other. We'll need another shape to fill the area in between to facilitate another clipping mask for that area. So grab the pen tool with fill in stroke set to none and create the four cornered shape as illustrated. The grid and the snap to grid feature will make things easier. Fill this new shape with red and lower its opacity to 30%. Select the right triangle and hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC to copy it and then hit Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC to paste it in front. Select this new shape, change the fill color to yellow and then move it 5 pixels up and 5 pixels to the right. Once again the grid and the snap to grid feature will come in handy and you can always monitor on the info screen if the movement is as per your requirement. Move to the left triangle and hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC to copy it and then hit Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC to paste it in front. Select this new shape, change the fill color to yellow and then move it 5 pixels down and 5 pixels to the left. And here as well, the grid and the snap to grid feature will come in handy and you can always monitor on the info screen if the movement is as per your requirement. Your screen at this point should look something like this. Go to window and disable the snap to grid option. And then go to preferences and go to general under preferences and set the keyboard increments to 5 pixel. Mine is already set to 5 pixels, so I don't need to do much here. I'll just hit OK. I need to select my text, and since there are these shapes sitting on top of my text, I can't select my text without disturbing the shapes on top. So my only option is to select the text from the Layers panel. If your Layers panel is not showing, go to Window and select Layers, and it will show on screen. I'm going to expand my layer by clicking on the small arrow to reveal the different sub-layers it holds. Let me rearrange my panels a bit because my layers panel needs some breathing space. Now I can clearly see the text layer from here so I'm going to select it by clicking the small hollow circle on the right and you shall find the text on the screen getting selected. Hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC to copy this layer and then Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC to paste it in front. Select this new copy and using the arrow buttons move it 10 pixels up and 20 pixels to the left. Remember under preferences we have already updated the keyboard increment to 5 pixels. So two clicks of the up arrow will move it to 10 pixels up and four clicks of the left arrow will move it 20 pixels to the left. Now you can delete these guides. Just click on them one by one and hit delete or backspace and they'll be gone. Select the yellow triangle on the left along with the text copy added a few moments ago. You'll have to select the text copy on the layers panel. Ensure that you hold shift to select both and go to object and then clipping mask and select make. In the Layers panel, select the text once again and make another copy, much like we did earlier. Select this new copy and move it 10 pixels down and 20 pixels to the right. Using the arrow buttons, you'll have to hit down arrow twice for 10 pixels and then right arrow four times for 20 pixels to the right. Select the only remaining triangle along with the text copy added a few moments ago and go to Object and then clipping mask and select make. At this point both sides of your rectangle must be looking similar. Select your red shape and hit command C on a Mac or control C on a PC to copy the shape and then hit command F on a Mac or control F on a PC to paste it in front. Select this copy along with your original piece of text from the layers panel and go to object and then clipping mask and select make. Now we need to add shading so first of all enable the snap to grid option from view menu 
Select the right triangle and add a copy in front using Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC to copy it and Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC to paste it in front. Select this copy, hold the Shift and Option buttons on a Mac or Shift and Alt buttons on a PC and then resize your triangle to 240 pixels. The info panel will help you gauge the measurement here. The smaller triangle that we've just made is only to get the diagonal dimensions as we'll be inserting a stroke here. Drag a guide from top to place it to the top of the smaller triangle, then select the smaller triangle once again from the layers panel and then drag another guide to the bottom of the smaller triangle as illustrated. Select the smaller triangle once again from the layers panel. Pick the line tool and draw a line touching both points of this triangle as illustrated. With the line still selected, go to the stroke option and select black to activate the RGB scale and then enter 39 for R, 0 for G and 76 for B and hit enter. Now change the stroke width to 20 pixels and from the width profile on top, select width profile 1 and your stroke will have pointed corners now. Move to the left triangle now. Select it and add a copy in front using command C on a Mac or control C on a PC to copy it and command F on a Mac or control F on a PC to paste it in front. Select this copy. Hold the Shift and Option buttons on a Mac or Shift and Alt buttons on a PC and then resize your triangle to 280 pixels. The info panel will help you gauge the measurement here, much like earlier. Drag a guide from top to place it to the top of the smaller triangle. Then select the smaller triangle once again from the layers panel and then drag another guide to the bottom of the smaller triangle as illustrated. We can remove the other two guides we created earlier for the other triangle. Select the smaller triangle once again from the layers panel. Now pick the line tool and draw a line touching both points of this triangle as illustrated. With the line still selected, go to the stroke option and select black to activate the RGB scale and then enter 39 for R, 0 for G, and 76 for B and hit enter. Now change the stroke width to 20 pixels and from the width profile on top select width profile 1 and your stroke will have pointed corners now. Select your two lines and copy them using command C on a Mac or control C on a PC and then go to effect and then blur and then Gaussian blur Enter a 13 pixel radius and hit OK. And then group the lines by hitting Command G on a Mac or Control G on a PC. Select your two triangles and go to Object and then Compound Path and then Make to turn them into a compound path. Bring this compound path to front by hitting Shift Command and right bracket on a Mac or shift control and right bracket on a PC. Now select it along with the group of lines made in the previous step from the layers panel and go to object and then clipping mask and select make. Now it's time to add highlights. So remember in the last step we had copied the two lines before further processing them. Now is the time to paste them. So hit command F on a Mac or control F on a PC to paste the copies of those two lines in the same place. Make sure that both lines remain selected. Set the stroke color to white and decrease the weight to 14 pixels. Change the blending mode to soft light and then go to effect and then blur and then Gaussian blur. Enter a 15 pixel radius and hit OK. And then group the lines much like we did earlier, hitting Command G on a Mac or Control G on a PC. Bring your red shape to front by hitting Shift Command and right bracket on a Mac or Shift Control and right bracket on a PC. Select it along with the group of lines made in the previous step 
the white ones and not the black ones. Go to Object and then Clipping Mask and select Make. And there you go. The sliced text effect is ready. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And even if you've learned at least one thing new, I'd consider this to be a success. So do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet again, goodbye and thanks for watching.